Good morning. Today is the 244th anniversary of a perhaps a rough day in the life of a certain number of people when they had to go home and let their families know that they had just declared independence from England. Like, yes, honey, we sent the letter. We're out. Can you go get it? <laughs> it's not too late. Mail takes a long time. Nope. We're out. Well, today, as we consider, you know, a day after our Declaration of Independence, July 4th, which we celebrate as a nation, uh, we, we are confronted with this promise of a better king, of a king who brings peace, And this, this promise of a king is, is one that, again, as a, as a nation, we've, we've moved past. We, we dumped the king. We set up a nation not based on a person, but on principles. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. We hear them every year around this time. We hear them at many other times. And we know that we've not achieved that in any perfect manner at any moment in the time since our nation's founding. And we know as citizens, we get to participate in that process of, of self-government, of, of governing uh, this, this nation we've been blessed with. But... The biggest and most awesome blessing that if we're self-aware Christians, we've been given as, as Americans, as citizens of the United States, it's that we get to worship our king and serve our king inside this context of this nation. And from day one, very early on, the Catholics, while yes, there are, there are tales of our persecution and they are true, but compared to other places, we've been persecuted here less. Early on, they asked George Washington if they, a bishop could be appointed. And George Washington was a you know, marginally Christian, a bit of a deist, maybe a mason. But he said, sure, send a bishop, appoint one. Because the vision of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as lived here was open uh, to a certain religious pluralism that has enabled us or enabled us as Christians to follow Jesus without the threats that many people even today experience if they proclaim Christ as Lord and Savior, if they surrender to His yoke and His comfort. In many places, you're persecuted. Here, for the better part of the 244 years, that persecution has been milder than most places. And the question that we get to confront every, really every day as followers of Jesus is are we moved by this gospel where he invites us to come to him? To come to me, all you who labor and are weary, and I will refresh you. Lord knows we are in an uncomfortable moment in our nation's life. Where are we going for comfort? Is it the internet? Is it the TV? The news cycle? Is it in the newspaper? Is it a political movement, whether it's good or not? Is it, is it incessant conversation about it? These are things that I struggle with. But where do I find comfort when I go to Jesus? 
when I bring him my fears, when I bring him my concerns, when I bring him my anger, my confusion, my disappointment. Not simply in the political realm, but in every dimension of my life and ideally every dimension of yours, we're going to Jesus and we're sharing our heart with Him. And we're discovering again and again and again that when we seek comfort elsewhere, it doesn't work. In our job, in our financial situation, in our political persuasion, in our hopes for, in a certain sense, heaven on earth, we're always disappointed. That doesn't mean we don't work for a more just society. But we know that it is only in Christ, it is only under His yoke, that we will be free to live in the face of all the darkness that perpetuates this side of eternal life. So as we do thank the Lord for the gift of this nation, as we beg Him to give us the wisdom to continue the journey of improvement, we want to make sure we're really leaning on Him with all our hearts. Begging Him um, to give us the courage to face the reality as it is, not as we'd like it to be, and be agents of His kingdom here.